We have been dealing with functions for quite some time now, right? And what we're going to do now is think about how, how do functions interact with each other, particularly in the context of graphs. Now, the point of us introducing this particular idea, addition and subtraction of functions, the point of us doing this is so that, number one, all the functions you've ever looked at in the past that in any way involved addition and subtraction, we will understand them better. It's like a new lens to look at an old object. You're like, oh, cool, there are things I didn't see before, right? And secondly, there are some functions which we will not know how to graph with the regular old methods that we've got, right? There's no like quadratic formula. There's no like, oh, just put this number in, you get the y-intercept. We will need to rely on this new method to graph these future functions that we haven't looked at yet, okay? Now, just to quickly illustrate what I mean by a new lens to look at an old object. Do you remember when we introduced the idea of odd and even functions, right? You remember that? You're like, oh, some functions, many functions in fact, have different kinds of symmetry, right? Now, one of the examples that we gave you for a function which has even symmetry is x squared, yeah? Now, you've been dealing with x squared for a long, like for years at this point, right? But you never knew to call it an even function. Um, you never knew to call uh, y equals x. You never knew to call that an odd function, but now we give you this new way to think of it, right? The reason it's useful, morning, is because now if we think about things with odd and even powers, right, which is where the odd and even names come from, right? For example, if I gave you a function like x cubed uh, minus x, right? So this guy here, right, this has what kind of symmetry? Oh. Have a think. I'm, I'm already telling you it has symmetry, you can see it. This is rotational symmetry, right? Which is odd symmetry. The way I knew that this would give me an odd function, right? I didn't know what it was going to look like. But the reason I knew is just have a look at what this graph is. It's actually, let me write it properly. It's actually x cubed take away x to the 1. Do you see that? So all my powers are odd. Do you know that? They're all odd, odd numbers. And so whatever I'm going to get out is going to be odd. Um, I don't know exactly what it's going to look like, but if I add on, say, x to the power of... Pick another odd number for me. I've got lots of odd numbers. Let's go with 7. Okay, sure. Now, this one here, right? Actually, let's just make it a little more interesting. Let's do... There we go. Okay, let's... Uh, maybe if I put a... What the hell? Yeah, there we go. What, what, what is going on there, right? Now, it, yeah, it does kind of, doesn't it, right? So this shape here, I didn't know what was going to come out when I started to press the numbers, but I knew it was going to have odd symmetry because I've got all these odd powers here. Does that make sense? Right? So this is like, oh, it starts with simple objects like this, right? You're like, oh, okay, do we need to know what even symmetry is to describe this object? The answer is no, we don't. We already know what this is about. But what happens is once you know what odd and even symmetry are, it, it sort of charts the path to new and weirder objects, okay? So does that make sense? That's where we're going. Now for that reason, you didn't get a piece of paper, Justin. There you go. For that reason, you can see the functions that we're starting with today, in fact, all the ones on both sides of this piece of paper, they're all functions that you know about, okay? And we could graph these without knowing about addition and subtraction of functions, but I want us to use addition and subtraction of functions as our lens, okay? So here's the first one we're looking at f of x equals 2x minus 1, and g of x equals x plus 2. My first question to you is which of these is which? Which one is the f of x? And how can you tell? Which one? Can you describe which one? How would you describe without like saying, oh, it's that one, right? What language would you use? Yes, Ring. Uh, it, goes, uh, um, it goes to the right. How would you say that? Yeah, that's a really good question. Lurao, do you want to go ahead? Uh, you have a go. So this one. Okay, okay, try and use some language, right? Because I, I'm like, which one? I don't know. You, hold on, guys. Let's let her have an opportunity to speak. Yeah. Ah, okay, so the y-axis is here, right? So you can see where negative 1 is on the y-axis, right? It's right there, right? That guy there, okay? And that's the y-intercept of y equals 2x minus 1, isn't it, right? So therefore, I'm just going to label this guy here. Uh, another way you could say this, by the way, is it's... Um, can you tell me about the gradient of this line? In relation to the other one, like, this is the steeper one, right? Its gradient is 2 as opposed to the gradient of 1. So this one's steeper, this one's shallower. Okay, so let's just label these. Uh, I'm going to say over here, this is y equals g of x over here. And this one is y equals f of x. You okay with that? All right. 
Now what I'm going to do here is I want to think about what does y equals the sum. What happens if I add these up? f of x plus g of x. What would that look like? Okay. Now I already know and we're going to use this to confirm our knowledge in a minute. I already know that you could algebraically add these together. You'd get a new y equals whatever, and then you could graph that, okay? But what I want to push your mind into thinking about is, what if you didn't know? What, like, what if you put them together algebraically, like, I don't know what this looks like. Can we use these graphs to help us? And the answer is yes, okay? So here's what f and g look like, okay? How can I use the graphs? You don't need a pen for this, or a pencil, Justin. How can I use the graphs to work out what the sum of these two will look like? Well, I'm going to look at a few interesting points that are going to help us. Here's the first spot. So this one here is f and this one's g. Do you notice you've got some x-intercepts? f has an x-intercept and g has an x-intercept. I'm going to use both of those. I think they're going to be really useful. See this spot here, right? By the way, just looking at the graph, what does that look like? What coordinate do you think that looks like? Looks like a half to me, right? And the reason why I've put this into like graphing software is so that I get exactly a half, in fact. Okay? So that is x equals a half. Now I want you to look above that, and in fact, draw a line up with me, right? Up above, you've got this point here, right? So these points are vertically on top of each other, right? Now, if what I'm saying is, hey, my new function, the new thing I'm going to draw is f plus g then at the moment, I've got zero plus some other thing. What, what does that some other thing look like, roughly, anyway, on the graph? Uh, what numbers does it look like? Uh, it's between two and three. Five. Let's just call it two and a half. Okay, two and a half. That looks like two and a half to me. What's zero plus two and a half? It's just two and a half, right? So when I'm doing f plus g, and I do zero plus something else, all I get is the something else. In this case, two and a half, right? So when I add these together, that spot, my graph is going to go through that spot. The sum of these two graphs will go through that spot, right? Okay, because I'm thinking about this graph plus this graph. That's what, that's what f of x plus g of x means. It's one graph plus the other one, okay? So that's what I got from this x-intercept. You notice there's this other x-intercept over here, okay? So let's have a look at this for a minute, right? So that's minus 2. x equals negative 2, right? Now when you look at the other graph, uh, the other graph is not above, it's below, isn't it? And you can draw, go ahead, draw this arrow down, like so, right? And that's at negative 5, isn't it? Now again, the whole way through, I'm doing this graph plus this graph, right? At this particular x value, I've got 0 plus negative 5. What is 0 plus negative 5? It's just negative 5, isn't it? So when I add these two spots together, this one plus this one, what I get is this one down here. Okay, Rastin, you have a question? So, um, do you not care about the x um, coordinate? Do we only care about the y? Um, at the moment, I'm just thinking about this visually, right? So the x value here, I just want to know whereabouts is it, right? And then I can say 0 plus something is something, right? Uh, 0 plus something is something, whatever that happens to be. Okay? Yeah. It is graphable, right? Now, just before we do graph it, I'm going to put one more piece of information here just so I can be sure. Okay? Uh, another point that's interesting to me is here, that point of intersection, right? So at this point here, both of the graphs are equal to what? What y value do you get? Five. You get 5, right? So I'm adding these two together. So what's 5 plus 5? Ten. It's 10. So where's 10? It's up here up here, right? So whatever I get, when I add these two graphs together, should go through there. Do you agree? Are you tracking along with me so far? So what I've done is I've looked at some particular points that are useful, that are easy to work out, and then I say, well, when I add these two graphs together, I should go through all three of these points. Okay? Does that make sense? So here's what I'm going to do. I think I've got enough information now to draw, bless you, what's going to go through all of these. You add one straight line to another, you're going to get another straight line, right? So let's see if I can draw all the way through this. Um, I think I'm going to get something, I'm going to do this. This is going to go through like that, like so. Do you see that part there? And I'm going to do the other end as well. It's going to look something like this. Okay, so do you see my red line? It goes through all three 
of the, the crosses that we put in. Are you tracking with me so far? Is that okay? Right. Now what I can do is I can check to confirm, is this, gonna, is this actually going to work out for me, right? I'm going to use my algebra, which I already knew how to do before, to confirm whether my graph is accurate. So let's have a look, think about, you've got this right hand side of the page, right? What are f of x and g of x? They are 2x minus 1 and x plus 2. Now I'm not solving simultaneously here, right? I'm actually just adding these two functions together, like so. Okay, I'm just adding them together. So I'm just going to collect some like terms here. This is just algebra, yeah? Uh, hold on. I'm adding. I'm adding. So how many x's are there? There are three. Three x. And the minus one plus two gives me plus one. Now what do we know about this graph here? Right? What can you tell me about it? I can see the gradient. It's written in a form. Sorry, that's a bit messy. It's written in a form so that you can see the gradient is right there. Three, so it's quite steep. And its y-intercept should be one. one, like so. Can you look at our red graph and see if that pans out? Yes. Does our red graph intersect at one? Yes. Bingo, right? If you used a ruler, you should have nailed it, okay? Does it have a gradient of three? Yeah. Yeah, it's really steep. In fact, you can even look at any spot there. You can find a spot like, say, say down over here, right? Let's just have a look at this section of the graph here. Do you notice when you go across one unit, right? How high do you go to connect to the next part? Three. Rise, sorry, rise over run is three over one. It's a gradient of three. And you can actually check that all the way along the graph. Does that make sense? So what we've done is we've used a visual method to work out what happens when you add these two together. And then we confirm that algebraically. This is a simple example. We wanted to start there. Is your brain going okay so far? Yeah. All right, good. 